In this movie, we'll take a quick look at the timeline and how it is set up. If you've worked with any other type of applications that utilize timelines, some video applications, 3D animation applications, you'll be very familiar with how or what the timeline purpose is. If you are new to working with animation, this area down below here, the timeline palette that I'll go ahead and move my cursor around in, is how we control things over time. The stock character that loads into Anime Studio Pro 9 is already actually animated. We can't see that here because they use some special tricks in here to hide the animation, and we'll learn how to do that shortly. I'm going to go ahead and drag the cursor and move through. We have little keyframes here that we'll become very familiar with as we start working with the actual animation capabilities. But what we have here is the channels that we work with. All that's showing up as animatable items right here happens to be the cameras themselves. And this is because I was moving the cameras in an earlier movie. We have the sequencer down below, which is the various individual parts that corresponds to the layers over on the right hand side. And then we have a motion graph, which is how you keep track of what is going on with a specific layer over time. There's no content in these yet because that is not how this particular character is animated. Well, I mentioned it's animated. How can we see that? One way is to grab the little red marker that's on our timeline over here on the lower left-hand side and drag it through our scene. And we'll notice that we have a cape blowing majestically in the breeze along with the delightful long golden locks. Additionally, to play the animation, you can come up to the transport controls right here at the very center of the screen. And like a VCR, you click the play button and we'll start showing you exactly what's going on. These animations that you're seeing right now, the cape, the hair, have been set up to function independently and animate independently of the character itself. So if the character is walking, the hair and the cape will animate along with it. You can segment your animation this way and create very rich and complex experiences on screen. I stopped by pressing the pause button on the transport controls and our little playhead here, the red one. If you want to know exactly where it is, we can go up and we see we're on frame 64 of 240 frames. Now there are specific scene or project settings about how many frames are shown a second and we'll get into that in an upcoming movie. But these are the basics of the timeline right here. We'll get into some of these specific controls as they relate to the motion graph when we start actually doing some animation.